Welcome to this week's Monday meeting. Today is January 29th, 2024. And Monday meetings are a chance for motion designers from around the globe to connect, ask questions, share inspiration, and engage with industry leading artists on a level playing field. I'm your host, Jen Van Horn, and today we'll be continuing our discussion on mental health and wellness best practices. So have your questions and tips ready. As always, if you have a question, please use the raise your hand button and Zoom to be called on. And if you're unable to ask your question, please type question in the chat and we can ask them for you. Uh, This call also will be recorded. And if you have any concerns about something said on the call, let us know at the end and we'll make sure to edit it out for the podcast release. So welcome, everybody. Um, For those of you that joined us last week, we were talking about mental health and it definitely took a a bank turn into the AI talk. (laughs) So this week we thought we'd talk about maybe some best practices or really cool ideas for how everyone kind of does their self-care because self-care is such a subjective um, term and it really could be anything. Uh, For me as a woman, I think self-care, I think spa day. So I'm always trying to do little spa moments for myself just to like relax um, and meditate a little bit. Uh, So also before we get started, we do want to thank our Patreon supporters. We really appreciate your support um, and so yeah, thank you (laughs) you for being um, part part of our team there. And also Camp MoGraph Australia tickets are still available if you're on the feds about getting those. They're really reasonable. And we also announced yesterday Camp MoGraph USA is in Chicago. So everyone gets psyched. Uh, Super excited for that. All right. Now, does anybody have a unique self-practice or self-care practice that they want to talk about? I love hearing how everybody kind of uses that term. I did want to say too, like, um, like Natasha's on the call and, and for our accountability group, we, we do have a mandatory self-care goal, goal that we put on our goal sheets, uh, because we realize that's something that, um, it's a priority and it's not something that is just a reward. I've noticed, like I can't build in self-care as my reward system because if I don't do something then what I can't reward, no, that's stupid. <laughs> so, uh, I try to, um, make it part of my routine, my self-care stuff. So I have like a a skincare thing at night I do with like, I have a, a, I'm so bougie. I have uh, an actual skincare fridge (laughs) in my bathroom that has like my uh, lotions and stuff. And I have a a face uh, steamer and it's kind of just a nice moment to throw on some meditation music and do that for like five minutes. Uh, It really doesn't take, take long. And since I moved to Colorado, actually, it was inspired by a moment I had in Camp MoGraph where I was, um, it was two years ago, the Virginia um, uh, camp. I had a cocktail and I sat in a hammock and I watched the sun go down and it was just like the most magical moment. So when I moved, I was like, okay, I need a hammock on my porch and I need to have maybe not a cocktail every night, but like, you know, I usually listen to a podcast and I I watch the the sun go down and it's kind of just like this nice little magical meditative moment that I try to uh, incorporate. So unfortunately, it's very cold outside. So I haven't been doing that lately and I have to find something to replace that because I really do miss that self-care moment. Uh, Mark, do you do anything for for your self-care mental health practices? Uh, I would like to say yes, and I'd like to say that I do it all the time, but no. Uh, (laughs) I mean, I think for me, my, my biggest kind of mental health uh, self-care stuff is just getting outside and getting exercise, going snowboarding or mountain biking, stuff like that, because it's honestly something that I don't think about a whole lot until like I go and do some sort of physical activity. And then uh, after that, I'm like fired up for the day and and like it just like changes my mood uh, for the better. Uh, and, you know, honestly, it's hard to like carve out the time to make that happen, you know? Um, and so I could be better about that, but a lot of times I don't even notice how much it affects me until I do it afterwards. And, you know, if I really realized how, how much it did for me, I would probably have a little bit more (laughs) motivation every morning, but, um, but yeah, you know, it's that stuff. It's also just trying to just turn off my brain a little bit too. Um, Mm -hmm. because I think again, it's stuff we've talked about in the past, but 
as creatives, I think our brains are always firing about like, oh, I could do this. Or if you're watching a movie or a commercial or whatever, you like see something and then subconsciously you start like, you know, reverse engineering how you might do that. And sometimes I just need to kind of shut it all off and watch like some trash TV or something. Like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, I hear you. It definitely is. It, it depends on where my state of overstimulation is. <laughs> so I definitely get that. So if I need to shut my brain off, I'll usually go play a video game. Otherwise, um, I like also getting my hands on something tactile art wise. So like mm -hmm. knitting or painting or sculpting and stuff. I, I really like, um, you know, like even that. honest, like yesterday we had like a family coloring session for like an hour and like God. just zoning out and like coloring with like some music playing. Like that was super relaxing and I don't know. Is it, and it's fun because we all can yeah. do it as a family. Right. And so it's kind of like family time, but it also allows everyone just to kind of like quiet the brains out for a bit. Yeah. I think um, me and my mom are introverted and my sister and my dad are extroverted, but we always try to have like a puzzle going whenever we're getting together as a family. Cause it's, it's just a, a nice thing. Who, who had like Puzzles a are great. Who had that, a puzzle, yeah. puzzle phase during COVID? Because I definitely had a puzzle phase. Like, that was amazing. <laughs> we actually recently bought a puzzle table. Oh, awesome. It's sweet. It folds up and, like, you can move it around and it has drawers that you can, like, sort into. And it's amazing. Nice. Awesome. Sam, what about you? I have started up my uh, my Lego phase again. Yes. Yeah. So I, I, I pretty much exclusively ask for Legos for Christmas. And that's been an amazing, like, thing to, like, uh, if I'm, you know, working on a render and I'm, I'm messing around with the same material for an hour and a half, and I just need to stop looking at it. I'll just grab one of the kits and build out one section. Um, you know, the, the, the newer Lego manuals, it's all kind of, like, broken down into small sections. So you can just kind of blindly do that section zone out let your brain kind of shift into that uh other kind of mode for a while and then come back to your work and it's so refreshing that's uh, great so i i've been just i have a few more to build and then i'm going to start uh that's not going to sit back up there i'm just going to start buying more for myself with, with any extra uh little bit i have left over at the end of the month that's uh, cool I yeah it's been, it's been a lot of fun and like lego kits are starting to get really elaborate yeah mm -hmm. like this bike actually has like a, a chain that functions like a real bike chain oh cool. that's cool i used to be super into connects when i was a kid because i loved the uh technology you can add to it <laughs> like little motors and stuff like that i um actually just recently picked up Skyrim again and I wish it was like a Lego kit where it would actually break out into small sections because I blinked and six hours went by and I was like oh yeah that's why I don't play video games as much anymore because I will just get totally sucked in and I, I need to set alarms um, <laughs> to drink water and blink <laughs> at least in between that. Natasha what about you? So mine is like you know, we're, we're sitting here, we're like working on a computer, like in general, in our culture, we tend to be like very much just in our minds. So mine is like lifting weights. Mm -hmm. And I also love to dance. I went out to like, unfortunately it starts at like 11 o'clock at night. I went to like new wave night and like just on the super crowded dance floor, like sweating with everybody. That's, that's the thing is like, if, if I like sweat till my hair is soaked, then I know that I, I've forgotten all of my problems whatever I was struggling with so it's like yeah, it just that. like remembering that we have a physical body mm -hmm. I think is important after sitting in the chair all day no for sure and it's it, you're just creating the dopamine too like that we really need when we're burned out so that's that's awesome Augustine how about you yeah I would say it's a, like a combination of multiple things on my end uh like one is planning time where I do nothing. Like when I say do nothing, it's like not just sitting like as a plant, but it's like nothing creatively related. Okay. Uh, and, and, you know, after like uh, maybe a heavy segment of time, because sometimes, you know, like you go from one project to another and you don't get to have like that buffer of time where you can unload your brain. 
So I forced to have that buffer at some point when I can like handle dates. So I can have like a segment of time where my brain's not like learning something or working on something or creating ideas because that allows me to kind of like uh, avoid mental fatigue uh, and burnout. Um, so that's just like a discipline I have like established. And it's also like during the day, have like moments of um, doing other stuff. Of course, like as a parent, I have to. So like I need to be, you know, eating with the family or cooking for the family and stuff like that. And more often than, than we think, we tend to like skip those because too much work or because this or because that. And like I've established this rule where like at like, I don't, I don't know, like maybe 6, 6 p.m., I stop what I'm doing no matter what. And I take like at least two hours to cook, to spend time with the family, the kids, tuck her to bed, uh, maybe a little bit more time to walk the dog. That's also like a, something I do every day is go for a long walk with the dog. Mm -hmm. uh, it's good for him. It's good for me. Listen to music, you know, like think about whatever. Um, and uh, yeah, and also like having like those moments where, again, you're not forced to do something. You just, you know, maybe I will take a nap or maybe I will read a book or it's just like st st stopping screens and, and letting your brain roam free. Uh, that has all those little things like, and the buffer of time has mm -hmm. helped me a lot to kind of like avoid being burned out or fed up, you know, like, uh, <clears throat> Yeah. yeah. And like Natasha said, like sports also helps, you know, like to like, you know, like healthy mind in a healthy body and healthy body with a healthy mind. It's kind of like those things. Uh, sometimes when the day was like very stressful, you go for sports, sports, and it helps you unload all the pressure you had for the day. Yeah, for sure. I know. Like I'm t a total sports nut. No, I'm just kidding. I don't do sports. Well, I used to do like dodgeball when I lived in LA. That was fun. Um, but yeah, I need to definitely, I, I'm more like Natasha. I, I like to dance it out, <laughs> but I need to move around a lot. Uh, but getting outside is, is fantastic. And yeah, anything to get, well, I get super inspired though, too. When I go outside, like I get inspired everywhere and it's really hard to find something to shut my brain off. Um, so sports is probably a better way to do that. Also, uh, Victoria and Kendall in the, in the chat talking about cooking and baking, um, and I do both, but for me, it's totally different. I used to only bake when I was upset because I had to follow a recipe and I had to really focus on it when I'm cooking. It's more like I'm painting. I'm just tasting this and I'm adding that. And I'm, it's a little bit more fluid for me, but, uh, I have definitely started my, uh, my sourdough era and I've been <laughs> feeding a starter and, and learning how to, uh, to bake with, uh, the discard and stuff. So, um, yeah, I recommend that as well. Does anybody else want to talk about their self-help practices like how do you also how do you prioritize self-care during busy periods that's a big thing oh vishal go ahead yeah um hi sorry hey. later. um i i sort of started uh painting recently i mean i sort of got back into watercoloring it's been like years and it's been very you know very relaxing for me and it's you know it helps very clear my mind and also i i love bird photography so i thought why not combine them and i sort of to, uh, tried to paint and watercolor the you know uh, the photos of birds that i did so whenever i feel like you know too, things are too much or i just take my thing and just do that yeah nice yeah, yeah. Uh, i'm just going to i'm just going to show off yes please do <laughs> yeah so this is one. And, oh wow! And yeah, this is a sunbird, and uh, that's a sloth I painted. Nice. <laughs> and currently, I'm um, yeah. This is a hippo. Yeah, I mean, I'm just yeah. That's 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 basically all all of them. I think that's great. And it's the kind of thing too, where I've also seen people with watercolors in these like tiny little tins and you can really just take it anywhere. It's a lot more portable mm -hmm. than it used to be. <laughs> yeah. I just have a small tin like this so I can just sit anywhere in my house and just paint sometimes in the balcony. That's awesome. 
I really should take my iPad to like more coffee houses, just get out of the house. Cause there is something about just when you're stuck in one mindset, literally physically removing yourself and going somewhere else will help um, with that as well. And painting's great. Have you tried any self portraits with your watercolors? No, I haven't. <laughs> I'm, I'm still, uh, you know, uh, trying to control all how the water flows and it's still, you know, it's like half the painting that you see is like water is going everywhere. So I'm, I I haven't tried self-portraits. I, maybe I will, I will. It could be a fun metaphor with the water going yeah. everybody everywhere for your self-portrait. Uh, we mentioned this uh, last week too, when um, you're feeling really burned out, you're in a, like a raw place, doing a self-portrait is helpful to kind of just stamp where you're at and then you could move on from there um also like i did um a few people have seen this i my stickers for camp mograph last year were my uh myself or uh, my imposter syndrome self-portrait which is uh, i drew myself just how i feel when i have imposter syndrome which is basically me back in middle school braces unibrow crazy hair like with like my my calculator and my Lisa Frank binder and I was new to it, the new school and I was just a hot mess and there are no pictures. I've burned them all from that period. So I'm glad I at least like did that self-portrait. But I was told by a therapist that it's it's just helpful to kind of do the every once in a while, do a self-portrait because uh, how you view yourself changes. Um, and mm-hmm. it's just a, it's a fun exercise, even if you're not even that great at, at, um, at I art, really, you know. Really Thank you. Yeah. Well, you actually can. Like, obviously, those are gorgeous. So I highly recommend it. Mark, you want to jump in? Yeah, I was going to ask kind of the group, too. I know you had just mentioned this as well. But in terms of what what are some of the things you do when you're like in the heat of the moment or like stressed with like a lot of things going on? And I don't I'm I guess I'm curious to know what people do. Um But like if I'm in like crazy, say, production mode or something like that, I've got a lot of things going on work wise. What's kind of crazy to me is like. For me, I almost need to just like deal with the stress and just like push through it in Mm -hmm. a way, because like if I do get to a place where I'm so overwhelmed and have to kind of remove myself, I feel like. In that, I'm pulling some steam out of like my project or my motivation and whatnot. And, and I, I say that not really knowing how to describe it, but sometimes if I'm just like in the heat of the battle, if I like go mountain biking or something, right? It might it might help me like overall, but in that moment, I feel like it's almost hindering me because I'm like kind of pulling the rip cord on like flow or, you know, just how projects can get going like that, you know? Um, So it's always something I wrestle with, you know? Mm -hmm. And even though I, like I said, I know that exercise will be good for me. Sometimes I talk myself out of it really easily because I'm like, well, I need to do this and I need to stay on top of this. And if I don't do that, then, you know, like I I can really get into my own head to talk myself out of those good things. But I, I honestly do wrestle with the fact that I either need to push through it or I need to keep taking my breaks and, you know, and maybe every project's different. I don't know, but I guess I, I pose that more of a question to the group as well. If anyone else kind of feels like that and if so how do you deal with it personally i i have to i do better actually under pressure because i don't have time to do the analysis paralysis and overthinking every little thing if Mm -hmm. i have a set stack of to-dos you know and i break everything down by small bites and then that way i'm like crossing everything out and making everything green and like it, it really helps keep me motivated when i have sort of like a running track list like that but if i'm in a point where a client is like no rush i'm like oh don't tell me no rush <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I, I will stay on this forever <laughs> so and i'm not usually getting paid for forever so yeah <laughs> augustine you want to jump in what do you think yeah no i was gonna say mark like you know, there's a, so there's so much your mind and your body can do in a day, and we all know that it's like a it's like a bell curve. You know, like we get the engine started, 
we get up, like there's a plateau where we we are on the top of our game, we produce, and then it just naturally we start to be less productive at some point during the day or the evening or whatever what time it is for you. And um, and there's like my analysis is just like there's nothing you can do about it. At some point, yeah. something that would take you an hour or maybe thirty minutes will take you three hours because your brain is looping and this and it's like. And at some point, mm. you're just like not only losing like precious sleep or like rest time, you're losing time to like refresh and maybe come back later, like rejuvenated and, and be able to like do tackle it properly. And so sometimes like that's my, that's how it works for me. Mm. Like there's a point where I'm like, sure, I have the pressure on, on, my, on, on my back, but I'm, I realize like objectively that what I'm doing now is crap. And and it's taking way too long. So I need to either go back to bed or take an hour or two hours, even if like in my head, it's like, uh, I could be working, you know, like, but then after I do it and I come back and I'm like, okay, done. You know, I'm like, okay, those two hours or that hour was well spent, you know, or, mm -hmm. or let's say you push it like even like very late at night because you want to work, to work more, but you're less productive. But then your right. next day, you're completely messed up because your whole sleep cycle is broken. And then and then you're not good either on the next day. You know, right. so I mean, so I, I came to accept like that some that at some point, there's nothing you can do about it. And, and you have to like embrace it and go like, okay, like at this time today, I'm no good anymore. So I must go yeah. take some time. Or no, I, I hear you. And like, I think, honestly, I think what I've started to realize now that I'm 43, <laughs> uh, I, I don't even know. But the, uh, like, sleep has become so much more important. Yeah. Like, I don't know when I crossed this threshold, but like, I used to be able to like sleep like four hours a night and get up and just like keep charging, right? Like no problem did a lot of live production for a while it was just like what you do right like it just didn't even phase me now it's like holy cow if i get enough sleep i'm like i don't need an energy drink or a coffee or whatever you know i'm just like fired up and ready and from what i gather i'm no like a uh, uh, psychologist or whatever but uh when you sleep is when your brain essentially like takes the pile of papers that's on your desk and files them into the right folders and reorganizes. It's like defragmenting your brain essentially when you sleep it like that's when it can compartment come. I'm just going to say sort it sorts through all the shit. <laughs> and like, it's crazy that that is, you know, obviously it's proven to be true, but I think that also really does go hand in hand with like, productivity for creatives and whatnot like if all that stuff gets filed away and you can remember things better and all the stuff uh you're just gonna be that much more productive on that following day right so yeah something i still need to learn myself i love staying up late and like having you know my time after the family goes to bed and all the stuff but yeah it's it's definitely i've noticed in the last year it really has made a difference the more sleep i get yeah, uh, yeah, I could put in the uh, the chat uh, why we sleep. It's a really good book recommendation on that. And mm. since college, I've been training my body to do like a, a twenty minute nap almost every day, and that's that's been working for me ever since. And even when I like I went to an actual job, I would take a twenty minute like on my lunch break, I would just nap in my car for twenty minutes. And now it, I don't even need to nap. I like my sister puts it in a in a good way. They don't use the word nap in their house. They they call it a body rest. And mm. I like I like that better because sometimes I don't need to sleep. I just need to like lay down and breathe. And that mm -hmm. is enough to reset my brain. But if I sleep and I don't set an alarm and I sleep past an hour then I'm like dead the rest of the day. So it's got to be like that 20 to 30 minute window uh, seems to kind of reset and I can get sort of a do over for my day. But also knowing when you like Augustine, like you need to know when your productivity hits during the day because yeah. then you could schedule around that. And you're not. Well, yeah. 
But I think just yeah. like training yourself to maybe like maybe set an alarm every two hours or something and check in with yourself. Where you're like, am I being actually productive or am I just going through the motions? Maybe I need to take a break, you know, like something like that. For me, I just, There's I said, something- you know. Well, there's something too that like if you're feeling and a lot of times that happens after lunch, like because your body's kind of processing the food and all the stuff. Like if your body is feeling tired, like studies show that like you should actually go take a nap. Like Mm -hmm. you should go rest your body for like, you know, 15 to 20 minutes. And that will make your day way more productive than just trying to like slog through that little lull. And then like, you're just never going to hit the productivity level that you would if you, if you follow or listen to your body. Yeah. My cousin but it's calls- so like, it's so not normalized in the U S culture, but if you look in Europe and other, other cultures around the, the world, mm-hmm. you know, have a midday break, chill out is like built into the, you know, the daily routines. Yeah. None and of this 30 minute lunch break BS. <laughs> in the u.s uh yeah my cousin calls it fat belly shut eye <laughs> so she calls that nap <laughs> um cons you have your hand up what's up yeah morning guys uh i definitely uh relate to what you were saying mark where you're kind of like flipping over the stone in your head where you're like i'm productive right now I, I you know i've done this before i can just like grind and get this task done or whatever uh lately i've been uh setting like a 30 minute timer uh, to get in some push-ups, like 15, just 15 push-ups, like every 30 minutes or whatever. But frequently I'll like be in the middle of a task and I'm like, the alarm goes off. And then I'm like, if I do this, I'm going to lose track of what I'm thinking. And then it's like, I'll hit the alarm and then like two hours goes by and I'm like, damn it, I should have taken that break, you know? And then you're like scatterbrained all over the place, like trying to take on too many tasks. And then I found every time that I do commit to doing it, Then it's like during the pushups, I'm like actually still sometimes even like focused on the task. And then I just kind of like, you know, figure out like, oh, I was stuck on this thing, jump back to the computer. And then it's like almost easier sometimes. And then, you know, kind of helps to keep going with that trend, I guess. Um, But yeah, I don't know, just throwing that out there. I think that that kind of stuff helps to just take your mind off of things because I remember an old like director that uh, anytime I'd be overwhelmed and he could sense it and he'd be like, you know, the work is still going to be there. Yeah. Like you take a nap, you do whatever, the work is still going to be there. And after this project, there's still going to be another one. <laughs> yeah. So I think sometimes like taking it easy on yourself can kind of help all around with everything that we're saying. Yeah. Shout out to the great producers out there that can recognize that. Cause I also have a great producer that says, Jen, we're not doing brain surgery. No one was going to die. If you have to take an extra day, <laughs> he's like, actually I pad our schedule in case anyone does need to take an extra day. So the client it just doesn't realize and, you know, you know, take, take you time. Cause like, would you rather have something good or do you want something great? <laughs> Cause I would rather do that, you know? And I, I, as a TA too, I've, I've been better at letting my students know, I'm like, Hey, I'm running a little late, but trust me, you want me to critique in the morning when I have eagle eyes and I can really help you <laughs> move your stuff along instead of, you know, sleepy mush brain, <laughs> then, uh, not going to have a strong critique. Yep. Sam. Oh, cons- sorry. Did you Oh, last thing. The other thing, uh, if you don't have time to go snowboarding and mountain biking, the nice thing is uh, doing some retail therapy, like (laughs) all the snowboards, all the mountain bikes. And then the hack is just like clear your cart and then go to sleep after. Yeah, as long as you clear your cart. Yeah. (laughs) Don't don't, don't drink and then accidentally hit. (laughs) Uh, Sam, you had your hand up. Yeah, so I I think I've mentioned this a couple of times before, but uh, just on the sleep thing. I used to do that night owl thing as well, you know, just work through exhaustion all night long. And when I switched, I I did it so late that I, it started to flip. Um, And I discovered being polyphasic and it's worked wonders Uh, and aligning, you know, you talked about a quick nap and if you sleep a little too long, it becomes a bad thing. And what that is, is you're not aligning your sleep with your REM cycles. So as long as you wake up after a REM cycle or before one, then you're okay. But if you wake up mid REM cycle, so if you set an alarm and you've woken up right in the middle of your REM cycle, you're going to be twice as exhausted. But if you wait till you finish that 
that cycle, you'll wake up refreshed because as, as Mark was saying, that filing system that happens while you're in REM sleep. Mm -hmm. And so if you can, like what I do is I sleep uh, six hours and two hours. It takes about two hours for me to get through that first REM cycle. And then I have basically two work days during my day and I'm able to be so much more productive because of that. And uh, every time I'm working on something in the morning and I hit a wall and I'm just kind of like getting frustrated and it's not looking the way I want. When I wake up after after that rest, it's like 30 seconds and it's fixed. And it's like, I couldn't do that before I took that nap because the way my mind had gone throughout the first several hours of my day brought me into that different headspace where I was no longer thinking as clear as I could. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just so quick once you have that REM cycle where it files away all the things you did right, all the things you did wrong, the problem just solves itself. Yeah, for sure. And also, if you if you can't, if you literally like just can't, I don't have time to take a nap. Um, having having a community or an accountability group to just run some things by just for an extra pair of eyes because you're too close to it. Really helpful. Highly recommend that. Lucky, you have your hand up. Yeah. Uh, for me, um, it's kill groups. Kill as many Discord, Slack, motion groups, not motion groups, but just groups that you've been adding over the years that you're barely in it. Mm -hmm. Just minimize as much as you can things that you haven't actually used and um, separate your work um, social and your non work social. So having two accounts, one which is actual useful things for your job and one that's like your fun thing. And if it's like, say, Discord or Slack, make it like accessible for your workday via the app. But the stuff that you're doing that's like more like fun groups, that can be like accessed by um, the like a website. Like, you know, you have to go to the actual Discord website, mm -hmm. which makes a barrier for you. And that barrier gives you less opportunity for you to actually use it. Um, and it seems like a small thing, but... The more you practice that, the more I find a lot less stressed out because you don't need to know every single person's message all the time. And you might feel like, oh, someone might give me a job offer in this random server that I've never visited more than once a year. But like, it, <laughs> it's probably not going to happen. Um, and yeah, I mean, I don't didn't really realize how many things I've been in until I started deleting one and then two and then five and then 10 and then 20. And then like, it just, it just keeps going. So like it separates your life is a, it is a good way for me to do that. Yeah, no, that's great advice. I definitely get stuck in that loop where it's like Cut off the noise, uh, the noise and turn off notifications, even with my notifications off, I'm, I'm still like obsessive about Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Oh, what did I miss on Facebook? You know, and I just get stuck in this like endless cycle. And it's like, wow, I've been on my phone for three hours. I really need to stop. <laughs> Put it away. There's some like study too that I heard that like if you if you take all your social or all your most used apps on your phone and you take them off the home screen and move it to like the other the you have to swipe once to get over to it or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to like make a, a big difference because it's not just right there. Dopamine hit. Bam. Just that little pause that your brain has to do. It's crazy. Oh, that's great. Augustine, you had a comment? Yeah, I want to say like a couple things is, you know, it's kind of like also scientifically proved that, you know, it's when you, you want you wanted to say something, you forgot about it. And the more you search for it, the less you will remind it. But if you let your brain dwell into other things, the answer will pop, just will come back. Like, I don't know how, why it happens like that, but it is like that. And so sometimes like what I try to do is like, um, in, like include those things that take me away from the screen, even if I'm working. Like I work a lot on paper, for example, or... Like I'm seeing the whiteboard behind Ryan uh, and stuff like that, because first of all, it gets you away from screens. We are too much exposed to screens and they do have like a psychological effect on us and how 
we perceive a lot of things. Um, it takes you away from all what, what Lucky was saying, like social media and stuff like that. I mean, you can, of course, have an app that mutes everything off and everything, but you can still me might be tempted to go watch this or, or an email or whatever. And, um, and so that can be like, you know, taking your paper and your stuff, even like outside how, the house, not only because you're, you're away of the computer, but also because that allows you, that allows your brain to be inspired by other stuff that's around you that you might think is not related at all, but your brain does like weird connections inside of it that jump from one to another and comes to like a final conclusion that comes to your mind is like, oh, and this, you know? But if you stay at home in front of your computer instead of the same, like the same room, the same things and everything, you're kind of in a loop. Um, and so that, that to me, like has like helped me also like quite a lot to keep it fresh, you know, like keep it like organic. And if I decide to like write or, or, or draw or something outside of the office or home, I go always to a different place. Mm. to see different things and it doesn't have to be far you know like that's also the thing um and it also like this this idea of like be do like do things with your body you know it's like you're not just like typing on a keyboard but if you're walking to the place you're moving another parts of your body if you're drawing you're moving your whole arm and then you're repositioning and and like those things to me like might seem as far away as possible but in fact, they are connected. And, and I replied to a post from Ryan um, when he was asking, like, what, what, what's like bringing your creativity and stuff like that? And I said, like, well, sometimes it's stuff that's not related to creativity at all. Like for a thing of the Red Cross I recently posted, um, I had to go like and do in-depth research on migrants and talk to them. And so, and when I was doing that, I wasn't like thinking, oh, what's going to be my concept or my ideas or stuff. Like I was doing like stuff like far from it, but that like brought in like a baggage of additional things that nourished so much the creative process afterwards. Mm -hmm. And, and I think like, yeah, you have to go, sometimes you have to walk the opposite way to realize that it's a circle. And then in fact, you join on, on the other side, you know, as a metaphor. No, I love that. It's a really good time to also point out that when you're doing something like that, being aware of your five senses, especially if you get into a panic state, there's that that exercise um, that I hear a lot, the, the five, four, three, two, one, where it's you have to look around and point out five things that you can see. I think it's four things you can touch, three things you can hear, two things you can smell and one thing you can taste. And you, to activate all of your senses, it kind of, it's like a body mind reset, uh, which is really great if you're in the middle of a panic attack, by the way, <laughs> it, it just, it, it gets your, your mind out of some sort of like spiral or panic state. So I, I highly recommend that. Olive, you have your hand up. Yes. Um, my experiences with all this, I mean, so I am, <clears throat> excuse me, I am incredibly ADHD. It's like, yeah. It's like, <laughs> and, you know, beyond medication, uh, the best thing I've I've kind of realized over the years is the only consistent thing about it is it's inconsistent. Mm -hmm. um, so every day with how I work and how I do everything else will change. And just, you know, being OK with that and having, you know, an incredibly robust, you know, on paper to do list that I do every day, every every evening before the next day. Um, if I'm really struggling, I just get way more granular, uh, just to kind of pick up that momentum mm -hmm. and kind of, um, be okay. You know, keeping the work in kind of short spurts instead of a continuous eight hour, 10 hour stretch, because there have been times where I'll just, you know, <sighs> something that would take five minutes to do to block a quick scene it would take me like three hours because I just like can't get my head in the right headspace and I just have to walk away yeah and then come back and then I, I get it done in five minutes you know so it's just knowing when is the right time um has been really helpful of you know not beating myself up over it and to um 
you know, schedule my life around what works in intense production. Um, I also agree to keep as much of everything on paper as you can. I used to run everything through spreadsheets and it was, I love spreadsheets, but it's, it's too much screens, you know? (laughs) Oh yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I hear that. Although I have saved a lot of money on paper. (laughs) I I love my Moleskin notebooks. (laughs) Yeah. And there was a study in Japan too, that said that like, if you're writing down notes, it's a stronger, um, that's another thing with sensory memory. It's, it's a stronger connection in your brain when you write it down physically. So yeah, no, that's. that's Didn't we learn anything from Bart Simpson? (laughs) (laughs) Over and over and bad over joke, again. bad joke. <laughs> awesome. Well, um, let's go to a different question here. Let's see. Uh, uh, also, if you know of any mental health resources lately, I know some people are maybe putting stuff in the chats. Lucky just said uh, Atomic Habits is a great book too. Like, I highly recommend that book. It's a great book. Um, if anyone wants to recommend any apps or anything like that, I know that. Um, what helps too with my mental state, because I've I've had I've had anxiety for quite a while. Um, but I was always in these um these workshops for time and project management. And probably the biggest takeaway I got from those was when I was writing down my daily to-do list, um, prioritizing them into this has to get done today. This is something that I could day do like today or tomorrow, and this is end of the week. So it's like prioritizing those with ABC, and then from there, one, two, three out of those. Um sections uh that that helps me if i need if i just can't get started <laughs> it's it's helpful for me and for me i personally like tackling the bigger tasks first um to get them out of the way but i know some people want to start with the smaller ones to get going i think it's like all i've said you know especially if you're a neurodivergent brain you kind of go with the the role you know like how you're feeling that day <laughs> and sometimes you just need something small to get started like i brush my teeth check oh that's a nice little dopamine hit so <laughs> what's the next thing um uh then you kind of kind of have to roll with it. Uh, I've got just like one more, I guess I can pass yeah. um, if it's of help to anyone. I I don't think you should like in in the current economy. I don't think it's a healthy thing to try to um, make everything you're working on or like it, like associate every single project that you're working on, like commercially which your creativity or which your creative fulfillment. And I think you should like in this specific time when there's like not that many jobs around and not that many fun jobs around, go and do some small stuff for yourself that you specifically know you won't make a penny on and try to disassociate your creativity from your creative job, even if they are creative quote unquote jobs, because I like, if we were to say this in 2021, there was a million creative jobs that pay amazing and you can make a thousand dollars a day, just everything's great, but now it's not. And I feel like the more like you like, at least for me, the more I try to make sure that my day job is both creatively fulfilling and pays the mortgage, like the more stressed I get. And I don't think it's, and I feel like since trying stuff on my own that the only I will see like long-term projects that I might post on Twitter, but like, they're not like for people they are for me, the more it feels more mentally stimulating because you're like, I feel like I'm finally splitting what is creative from what pays for the light to come on. And I, I, I feel like it's, I feel like it's extremely mentally stimulating and fulfilling to be able to, treat the most creative job you've ever done as a corporate job sometimes because it kind of is and so um at least while the recession is happening trying to like just go this it is what it is and this to show pass and uh let's let's leave this recession with like a bunch of fun things of them my spare time instead of going like oh uh, maybe tomorrow i'll find like an amazing creative job that is gonna really boost my morale somehow even though it didn't before i don't know I- I agree with that. I also think it's dangerous to like really connect yourself too much to a project because when you're a creative, you can't sometimes it's like you can't help it. Right. Because you're like, oh, it's it's an extension of me. It's my creativity. But then a client's just like, no, I hate that. <laughs> and they want to take it in a totally different direction. And then you're just like, oh, they hate me as a person. You know, like, like you take it way too personally sometimes when you get too into that. Yeah, it's a paycheck. And whenever I'm 
with a new project that comes up, I'm always just like, okay, what can I do to make this best for them? Like what, what, you know, if I could exceed their expectations, great, but mostly it's, it's a paycheck. It's not, it's not my work, it's their work. And, Mm -hmm. and that really helps to make that separation for me because otherwise I'm going to just cry in a corner. I don't like my rough. Yes. And also like, it's, it's important. Sorry. uh, Just, it's important to like remind yourself that you're not a one trick pony and your only source of creativity is not the more graph. You can be creative with pretty much anything you touch. And the more you touch things that are not connected to MoGraph, you can still feel extremely creative. Even, like even more so when you don't have a boss or like if you want to pick up woodworking, I guarantee most of you will be amazing at it because it's like it's it's just as creative. And um, you just happen to have hit on a creative op- option, which makes you money. But that doesn't mean you're a failure if you fa- if it doesn't look as good. Anyway, mm-hmm. that's me. Oh, yeah. Just real quick, too, I want to just jump in and like riff off that as well, because honestly, this is like the whole reason for Camp MoGraph, too. Like, yeah, it's we're creatives. We produce work for clients and we do all that stuff. And that's amazing that we get paid to do cool stuff like that. But if your identity is wrapped up in client work and quote unquote creative client work, it's I feel like that's a recipe for burnout and that's a recipe for like just feeling overwhelmed. But if you like how I've actually I'll speak from my experience, looked at. Kind of being a creative and and trying to find different outlets over the last few years, camp is one of those because it's another creative challenge but it allows me to flex kind of a little bit different of a creative muscle rather than I'm designing animation and stuff for camp. We're designing like the experience of camp and we're making swag and we're making like a cool little print zine and like all these things that just like are outside of my normal daily routine on things, but they're super fun because it's like, well, no one's telling us what the zine needs to look like. Let's make it look whatever, you know, just having the um, having the excitement of creating and with no one else telling us what to do or, or whatnot. But like, and sure, people were, I guess, getting that right with like NFTs and all that stuff, right? Like no clients telling me what to do. But you're still on a computer, right? And yeah, I'm still on a computer doing camp stuff. But really, all that magic is when we're all together, right? Mm -hmm. And like, it's those times and it's being creative in those times and creating those spaces for those for those times. (laughs) Sorry, it's Monday. Now, looking forward to it with yesterday's announcement with camp being in Chicago, too, just it got me psyched. And so i First thing I did is I went to Amazon. I started like picking all the things that I want. Like, oh, okay, well, if it's going to be more eight bit style theme camp, oh, I want like, you know, a Kirby onesie for Kanz's night onesie uh, thing that he wants to get going. And what kind of stickers do I want to design for this year for a sticker swap and like things that we take each year at camp just like amps up and up and up with the experience. And especially last year, I feel like so many people brought cool things to sign, like yearbook style. Like Cons had the had the uh, the yoga ball that we signed. Yeah, um, totally. People had t-shirts and posters and stuff like that. So it's like, how could we one up it this year? So it's just that excitement is already inspiring me just as a creative in general. So. Well, and what happened last year with everyone making their own sticker, like that all just kind of like happened, right? Like, but that just yeah. goes to show that's just all these creatives wanting another creative outlet just to make something cool because it's cool to make, you know, like, I, I feel like we've kind of, it's, it's easy as a creative to lose sight of like, let's just make something cool to make something cool. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, it doesn't have to check box ABC or whatever. So anyway. Yeah, for sure. Augustine. Yeah. I just want to say like bouncing on what like, uh, lucky was saying is The part of also of the job, like work is always a compromise, you know, specifically like for us creatives, because we have our vision. And then of course, like the client has their vision. And something I always tell to like, like to juniors, a lot of the time when they're complaining about the project not being fun enough or not being creative enough or not being like what like man versus machine is doing or stuff like that. And and then first, the first thing I say is like, you really think that they don't have like a hundred revisions at one man versus machine with their clients. 
they do have also those moments where they go like, but the client doesn't understand, you know, like, and it happens no matter which product you are into. And if the project like from like the global vision doesn't look sexy to you or interesting, then make it interesting Mm -hmm. to you. Like find the niche in it where you will have fun doing something that will bring some of you in it. It might not be the design. You know, maybe you're just animating typography. Well, then animate it in a way that that is your thing. You know, that there's so many, like, inside of a project, there's so many angles you can take on so many things mm-hmm. to have fun and feel creative. But that, but that's also, that that's kind of like, also like a mental exercise, you know, that I've, I mean, took me years to learn that instead of like fighting the brief, you know, or fighting the boundaries of a project, mm-hmm. like just look at them and go like, okay, I know I cannot cross this wall. I cannot cross this wall and I cannot cross this wall, but here I have a crack and here I can slip through and do my thing, you know? And, and that will like take off like so much relief on the frustration you can have on those gigs that are very corporate or very this or very that. Like I just came out before this call from a, uh, a brief from a, with a client. Mm-hmm. We had this amazing thing. And in the end, it's like, yeah, well, we have like half of the budget and for this and blah, blah, blah. So we have to rescope it in a in a diff, like different way. And you could go like, ah, oh, everything is broken now. Like, you know, this project is crap. But in fact, like the way I'm approaching is like, okay, we have a new set of boundaries now. How do we make it work and have fun with it and make something that's like, I feel creative about it. Yeah. Uh, and I think that that like will make you like see work in a totally different angle and it will relieve like steam from your mental because in the end, this is like a mental health thing. It will relieve like relieve, release, sorry, steam from the mental health thing because then you will feel also better about yourself, you know, and uh, and that we are our, we are our hardest critics. You know, the hardest critics we are facing is ourselves. So, yeah. No, highly it's it's gamification. It's it's figuring out what your biases so you can play off the gamification of your goals and your and I do that too with with a new project. I love boundaries. Like it, it makes me so happy because it's a game. It's creative problem solving. It's fun. You know, like I feel like that's why I do this, why I love it so much. Is every day is a new challenge and I like, you know, taking that head on. So yeah, highly highly agree with that. Olive. No, Jen, I'm totally with you. Just the whole yeah. problem solving element of it is I mean, even before I was really doing motion, you know, just in general post-production, it was just, yeah. I mean, and but like, yeah, going from what Augustine was saying, a lot of the time our creative work isn't creative. You know, it's, it's kind of paint by the numbers or it's just like, you know, I've had clients just last year tell me like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What you're making is pretty. We don't want it to look pretty. Literally it's supposed to look, you know, because of what we're trying to sell. And it's like, okay, swallow the ego hit. It's going to be okay. But on jobs where I don't get to really push that side of things, I look to more, okay, how can I improve my workflow? How can I use as an experiment to try to, since I don't have to think too hard on the creative, I can put that energy somewhere else that will still benefit me and potentially my colleagues. If I share something that's cool or new or like a a sweet trick and I can use those improvements on the more fun work, the more creative work when that comes. So I'm kind of, you know, as long as the job is paying the bills and, you know, there's always an opportunity to learn something and for to, you know, maybe it's not something I want on the portfolio, but it doesn't have to feel like a waste of time. Mm hmm. Yeah, sometimes I'll, I'll throw just like a time challenge. Like, well, I knew it took two days to get this done last time, but maybe I could do it in a day and a half. You know, like even if it's something as small as that, <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna get me going. I'm highly competitive with myself, <laughs> so uh, I can make anything pretty much a game. Sam, yeah, on, on the point about boundaries, um, my dad used to teach architecture, and that. He, his whole thing was you can't really be creative until you have a boundary because mm-hmm. it's pushing up against that boundary that enables you to make a creative choice. And so in in the first projects he would do every year with students, he would set 
all sorts of restrictions. You can like you can only make uh, walls that are orthogonal to each other. Because if not, people would kind of go when when you're coming in as a freshman architect, you don't understand the rules of the game and you just kind of go wild. And so you draw all these insane floor plans. And it's like, no, you're going to only make orthogonal walls. And that way you have to think creatively within, okay, I can only use 90 degree angles. What can I do that's interesting with that? Where where can that enable some thing that I wouldn't have done if I had too much freedom? Um, and uh, he wrote a book called Freedom to Create. And he, he talked about the balance between those freedoms and those constraints being where you get to show up as your creative self. So if you have a brief that's really tight and it's basically saying, here's exactly what we want you to do. As Augustine said, look for the little cracks in that system where you can interject yourself. And often that will like, you know, then they won't come at you like, oh, you know, you, you won't get that ego hit if they come at you because they probably won't even notice that little thing. But that's what makes the design kind of pop is that little bit of flair, that little bit of rule breaking that, mm -hmm. you know, only hits your subconscious. Yeah, like little and, and Easter eggs. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. Like I'm, I'm working on some logos right now for, for a jewelry company and all jewelry company logos are diamonds. <laughs> yeah. the, 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 you know every logo out there is a diamond so i'm like okay we're gonna hide the diamond we're gonna make the shape that goes around the diamond mm -hmm. and you won't see the diamond until you see it and then you can't unsee it and we kind of created that as a restraint for ourselves that we're not going to show a direct diamond and then all these interesting forms started to show up where you see you see that silhouette of the diamond pop into place and then you always see the diamond. But the first time you look at it, you just see the the form. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think that giving yourself, even if your client doesn't have those restraints, giving yourself some walls to push up against uh, is a very valuable way of accessing a different kind of creativity than when you just also it helps the uh, analysis paralysis. Mm -hmm when you you can't make that decision for yourself when it's already decided that's smart i've been trying to do that more too with um with plugins because i have all the plugins and i never use them and so even if i can't find a project client project that'll pop up i'll usually wait until there's some sort of challenge like an animation or design challenge and then i'll use a plugin there um which gives it a nice little added <laughs> little little game there well, um, we're getting close to the hour mark here. Does anyone want to have any like last advice for self-care or mental health practices that they enjoy doing? I think we covered a good amount. Just love yourself. Yeah. Give yourself some grace. Like <laughs> you don't have to work so hard. <laughs> you're, most of the pressure that you're feeling is also you're putting on yourself. I feel like we we get into that habit a lot. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for joining this week's call. You can find us on all the social media platforms by searching for Monday Meeting. Audio for the calls are posted each week on your podcast app of choice or available with show notes at mondaymeeting.org. Have a great week. Bye.